guys so this will be the blade vortex build guide um i will go through with, uh you guys from low to mid to a high to even very high budget okay so um before i begin i just want to let you guys know that for before you go into the low budget of the blade vortex if you are going to leak start and want to transit into blade vortex that will be my winter type brand which i will showcase it in another video together with all the other leak starters all right uh, i'm not done with the ice spear di yet so i will not release it the pov is here if you want to see you can just go and click it but in this video it's just purely on blade vortex okay so let's just begin the low budget um blade vortex over here um so you can see we actually have a very decent pool um enough mana to cover uh with the changes to the mana reservation um our armor is quite high for a low budget so enough to sustain all the way until probably raid tier maps and then we will have uh cap fire coal lightning resistance chaos resistance is really not a thing for low budget build so ignore it and you can see we have a really really good dps over here okay i am quite shocked myself at how much dps this build can actually give and i got to give it up for uh the new changes in the film sorrow gloves which i will mention later all right so just a quick one for the various skill tree i will have the level 67 right just right after act 10 okay and then you have uh progression all the way until 80 90 95 there is no level 100 i think if you can progress all until level 100 with this build then just add anything you want okay um if you want to know where is the difference between all the different levels um just click onto here and click uh the previous three and those highlighted ones are basically what you should be adding all right so um now that i am done with this let's go on to the skills the skills is pretty simple just that because um this is low budget we're not going to use hypothermia um everything else will be the same blade vortex unleash power charge on critical inspiration crit damage and the last one is actually critical strikes not hypothermia all right um you can also use hypothermia definitely but um critical strikes actually give you more damage Okay, so if you want to see how much more damage, I'm just going to show you a quick difference. Let's just say uh, with critical strike is 2.6M, without it, it's actually 2.5. So if you actually want the freeze, uh, you can change to hypothermia. It is perfectly fine, okay? It's perfectly fine. Um, but otherwise, you can just go with critical strikes. Okay, so next will be our utility. We're going to use flame dash with uh, summon flame golem calling strike. And then cast when damage taken, of course, with Molten Shell because we are using Determination. Um, Auras is just going to be this for Clarity, Hatred, Determination, Defiance Banner. Clarity, just up as much as you can as long as you have enough mana to use your skills, alright? Um, try not to go below 50, alright? About 70 to 80 is a good benchmark. And next, this is something that um, I would actually prefer. Um, it's actually the Hydrosphere Hex Touch for Frostbite and Elemental Weakness, okay? Why am I using this? Because, first of all, Hydrosphere has um, the exposure. So if you do not like Hydrosphere, you can actually use um, Frost Bomb as well, okay? Frost Bomb works as well. Um, I will only use this if they are like very tanky rare mobs or mobs that I know that I need a long time to kill and this is where this skill comes in. Okay, and the Vortex debuff is basically just Bone Chill, Arcane, uh, Unbound Ailments, and Arcane Surge. Why Arcane Surge at level 7? Because if you see carefully, uh, gain Arcane Surge after spending a total of 32 mana. Okay, so as long as you spend 32 mana on your Vortex, I'm going to go over to Vortex right now. You can see that it costs 33 mana. So every time I cast Vortex, I am guaranteed to get uh, Arcane Surge buff. Okay, if you want double the value, then it's also okay. So it's a 66, right? So you can just keep it at level 10. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Totally up to you. But uh, I will just keep it at level 7, all right? The difference is not really a lot. At least I have a full uptime of the Arcane Surge. Okay, and on over to the items. Um, For the weapon, use Storm Prison. Why Storm Prison? Because it grants you more physical damage. Um, 
and the physical damage will be converted into cold damage okay and the main thing here is the plus one to maximum power charge all right uh the rest are just additional bonus mana regeneration and lightning damage helmet um is just basically one life and one resist okay um there is a difference over here if you actually have enough currency and you want to change your helmet you can just equip all of this the rest the same and then equip the gal okay I, I think the gal is very good for starting it is very awesome it gives you a lot of good shrine buffs and stuff like that with the new ls skill trees and stuff shrines are really really awesome at the start okay that's what i want to say um otherwise just go with the rare helmet but i will of course prefer the gal and then your tabula rasa um if you actually manage to get a six link corrupted body armor with life then you can just use it okay very simple very straightforward over here otherwise just tabula rasa um grim, grim sorrow gloves this is the one that actually changes how strong this low budget build is right now okay 100% of physical damage converted to cold damage this is really insane <laughs> with just this one glove right now i do not need to take the passive on here which actually gives the conversion of physical damage to cold damage i do not need the gloves um i think it's ether of world or searing and such the modifier to convert as well and i also don't need the bench curve it's just straight up converting my damage all into cold Okay, and not only that, there is plus 25 strength and co resist as well. So really good over here. Only lacking life, which I think we should not bother that much. All right, we're already getting so much out of this glove. Okay, and then the boost is just life resist, movement speed. The rest is just fulfilling all your life resist and attribute. All right, I don't care like how, how you get them. The rest of the rare items is just fulfilling all of this tree. Remember, life resist and attribute okay you can have very godly on one of the rare items and the other one lesser it doesn't matter as long as you fulfill all of the requirements okay flask is just quicksilver diamond granite and sulfur um for the speed crit armor and just uh more damage all right um so for the uh sockets right i am going to go with conqueror's potency all right um, if you do not want, you can also use Conqueror's Efficiency. Then you can add more levels to your clarity if you really want. All right. Next is just um a Cobalt Jewel. You can if you have enough uh elemental resistance, then you can scale this with uh anti corrupted blood gem or just more damage on it. All right. Up to you. Personal preference. All right. So that's it for the low budget. Um, for the leveling notes, like I say. Just refer to my Occultist League Starter, which is the Winter Type brand. I will release it very soon. Um, for your maps, please take note that you cannot do regeneration. Uh, players cannot regenerate life, mana, energy shield mods. This is definitely out of the picture. You must and should reroll it. Right, the this. This tool is not really mandatory. You can try to attempt to do it, but you might be facing a little bit of challenge over here, okay? So actually, this build can do almost everything. It can even do reflect damage, right? Um, if you guys want to know why you can do reflect damage, first of all, it's because of uh, Soul of Yugu. Uh, you basically take 50% reduced reflected damage, and in your tree here, I have taken the Elemental Mastery where... Oh, it's actually wrong. Sorry, my bad. So with this, yes. So um, sixty percent reduced reflected elemental damage taken. Okay. So do take note of this. Um, yeah. Let me just save it. <laughs> yes, and that's it. Um, this is for the low budget. Okay, and next up, this will be the mid budget um build when you have maybe around ten. Exhaust, okay, maybe Exhaust is not a really good benchmark now. Maybe when you have 1,000 Chaos, okay, 1,000 Chaos, I, I don't know what will be the new currency economy in 3.19, uh, but I think a lot of things is going to change. But I will just label this as mid-budget. When you have more currencies, you want to upgrade your build more to have more DPS, then uh, this, is the, uh, this is the build to go, okay? So what are actually the real changes of this build? Uh, first of all is the cluster jewels okay you're gonna have 
two small cluster jewels that has reservation efficiency. One is basically for determination and the other one is basically for hatred. Okay, the next one you are going to have is basically your militant fate. Okay, militant fate is more for the um, when you allocate and has been faithful converted by high templar dominus um, basically what you want to have is this inner conviction three percent more spell damage per power charge okay yes this is basically what you want and then you have watcher's eye that converts 40 percent of your physical damage into cold damage while affected by hatred okay um we will still have 100 percent conversion don't get me wrong um, just that now, uh, because we have 100% conversion, we are changing some of the stuff. Okay, and over here, the skill gems, they are basically, they basically have quality. Okay, because you are in mid-budget, I assume you are going to upgrade your jewels as well. Okay, but they are not very expensive jewels. They are all just um, like either level 20 and 20 quality gem. There is no level 21 or whatsoever, okay? Just as long as you see it's zero, it means it is not required to have that quality. If there is a 20 quality, then uh, try to upgrade them. Alright, so uh, nothing really very special over here. Okay, um, the only difference, yes, there's some mixture around in the skills, uh, but they are basically almost all the same skill. Okay, just have a look at the POB. Alright, for the items, right, um, we are going to change up a little bit. Now that we have more currencies, we're going to buy two Void Battery. Okay, I am not expecting you to have the best of the best for the Void Battery. Just uh, buy them maybe at a mid-tier row, it is fine. Alright, Helmet, the Gao, and the Body Armor, we are going to start exploding stuff, which is the Crusader... Um, Enemies you kill have a 20% chance to explode, dealing a tenth of their maximum life as physical damage, okay? Coming uh, together with this is just some life on the chest and just equip it, okay? Um, if you think this is too expensive, then you do not need the sacrificial guard, okay? Uh, you can just use another, uh, another body armor that has the Crusader mod right over here. Okay, uh, the sacrificial gap is just additional and good to have, uh, but I think it might be a bit expensive at the start, right? Um, it is very hard to get, so that's why I'm trying to tell you that it does not have to be a sacrificial gap, right? Next, um, your gloves. Now that you have changed, you are no, long no longer using Rim Sorrow, you're going to use a Life and Resist uh, glove with the Benchcraft of... 20 to 25% of physical damage converted to coal. In this manner, right, you will have 100% conversion. Okay? And the boots is still the same. Life, resist, movement speed. Same for the amulet. Just uh, And your rings and your belt. Just cover back your life, resist, and attribute. There's nothing really... Uh, nothing much change actually from here. Okay? Uh, the flask is also still the same. Right, uh, like I mentioned, the only difference is the Watcher's Eye and the Militant Fate plus the Void Battery and your Body Armor. That is what is going to make up for your mid-budget build. You're going to start exploding stuff. You start clearing maps really fast and really good. I am very, very sure you are able to do high rate tier maps with this. Okay, very, very sure. Uh, low budget, maybe still okay. You might struggle a bit, might struggle a bit. But in my own judgment, I think you should be fine as well. Okay. Um, same. There is no changes for your maps. Uh, just that please re-roll if you encounter these players cannot regenerate life, mana, or energy shield. Right. So that's it for the mid-budget. Just to head over to the POB and check it out. Alright, and then next will be the high budget transition. This is where you are going to start farming a long time with your mid budget build. Alright, um, okay, I really wouldn't say a long time, but maybe for casual players, one to two weeks before you transit into this. Okay, and this is where the builds get the build gets a little bit complicated. There is a lot of changes. You can see we have double double clusters. Um, the skill tree is all over here. Do have a look. If you are actually playing off 
from another character you are already have all the items then there is a level 67 skill tree also but highly not recommended um the build really comes online and it really shines at level 95 okay on to the skills so now because we are scaling a lot of stuff do take note of the quality variant um inspiration is anomalous hypothermia is divergent and there are many other more okay um now that because we have a lot of uh life steal and stuff i'm gonna use life tap instead okay uh oh this is actually anomalous my bad um there's supposed to be 20 20 20 is this even needed Okay, this is actually not needed. <laughs> My bad. Uh, movement skills, same. Uh, this is plus clarity. Okay, do take note of that. And then you have the Vortex debuff. Um, Vortex is basically your Hex Touch, Elemental Weakness, and Bone Chill. Frostbite, we are going to get it on our rings. So I will show that later. And then the other two is just Aura. Okay. We're going to have Enlighten this time around so that we can accommodate every single aura inside it. Okay, um, the only difference here is there is an additional uh, addition of purity of en uh, elements, the anomalous type variant, okay? Uh, why purity of elements? Because we are going to use a lot of units and a lot of uh, special stuff. And so purity of element kind of like fulfills a lot of necessary things in this build so one is one and foremost is of course to cap the resistance secondly is give us immunity to all elemental elements we don't need to worry about shock freeze chill uh burn <laughs> ignite ignite sorry what burn <laughs> yeah ignite so that uh we don't have to worry uh if you get any of those mods or you see any of those mods in your map you i can assure you you will be super safe okay okay and this will be all for the skill gems the items we are going to use back the void battery from the mid budget build because crafting a bow and a quiver is going to be very very troublesome so i'm just taking this as a very simple approach void battery plus if you have the mtx for it then it's pretty nice holding two void batteries with the very cool power charge um, MTX as well. Alright, and then the helmet is going to be the power charge helmet, which is basically your Warlord and Redimir. Plus one to maximum power charge and nearby enemies have minus nine to cold resistance. This is going to be the Blizzard Crown. Okay, the enchantment is going to be the Blade Vortex duration. Um, you can go for the Blade Vortex damage, but I feel it is not necessary already. The DPS is already very high. You can see at level 95, this is already like nearly 13 million, all right? This is for mapping, okay? Uh, this is the maximum DPS you can get for mapping. You might go up, you might go down. Uh, it really depends, okay? And then, oops, sorry. And then, um, yeah, that's why Blade Vortex Duration is kind of better because you can sustain your Blade Vortex throughout the map much easier. Alright, for the body armor, we are just going to go with the Crusader and Redimir Sacrificial Gub this time round because you have uh, currency already. Um, not only you have the Explode Chest, but you also have the increased effect on non curse Auras from your skill with life. Okay, you can just benchcraft life on it. Very simple. And then the gloves, we are going to use Incursion Gloves. So for this glove, right, it is just very straightforward. You're going to have life, any one of the resists, plus the incursion resist that gives you increased damage with hits against chill enemies all right now with the changes to divine orbs uh you might not get very high rolls already it really depends so i think as long as you get the correct mod with an uh, additional prefix then just get it done all right you definitely need a prefix because you need to bench card physical damage converted to coal to get 100 percent conversion Right, um, for this glove, you're going to input or uh, slot in the Searing Exarch and Eater of World, um, where it actually gives you a chance to unnerve enemies for 4 seconds on hit, and at the same time, it also inflicts cold exposure. So you do not need to use Frost Bomb or you do not need to use Hydrosphere anymore. All right, This glove does it all for you. Boots, we are going to go with the Hunter Boots. Um, Basically, you have Tailwind if you deal a critical strike recently. 
if you do not want this, I think this can be the last item to buy. Um, the Tailwind is just additional bonus for you to move much faster. All right, that's my honest opinion. Um, amulet, we're gonna go with the reservation amulet. Okay. Um, what is important here is basically the twelve percent increased mana reservation efficiency of skills. Why is this twelve percent? The mod is actually 10% only, okay? Because we are going to use the quality for the amulet that increases life and mana modifiers at 20%. So you're going to get two more additional percent, okay? And then just craft life on it. The better version is to use, uh, is to combine with a shaper mod that gain 15% of physical damage as extra core damage. So slightly, uh, it's about like a hatred uh, aura, all right? Just that you are getting it on the amulet as well next will be the attribute ring all right we need to, we still need to fulfill our attributes so um probably at this stage you will need to get the topaz ring depending on your gloves all right if your glove is fire resistant then you get topaz if your glove is lightning resistance then you get ruby ring all right just to fulfill for the uh, to cap your resistance and then have strength and dex and then life with an additional prefix for your second ring you will need to find a redeemer ring that has cursed enemies with frostbite on hit so that you do not need to equip the frostbite skill gem right everything you hit will just curse enemies with frostbite simple okay and then the belt we are gonna just go for stygian vice life strength and then benchcraft dex why is this so simple? All right, um, I'll explain it later. With the Abyssal Jewel of 16 decks, uh, maybe just one line of Critical Strike Multiplier and life. Okay, the reason why I put this here is because when you have enough currency, when you farm a lot of currency with this build, you want to change uh, to a Headhunter, right? So when you change to a Headhunter, a lot of the builds, I realized that uh, the problem is you need to change your whole entire equipment just to fulfill the necessity needs for the build. That is why I built, um, I allocated the belt to be working out this way. In a sense that when you have the headhunter, you just need to replace your belt, right? You don't need to do any other thing to the build. You are using every single equipment from top to bottom, all the same, including your jewel. Right, so that's why it is designed like this, okay? When you have a headhunter. So remember to change it. Um, and then the flask, we're just going to go with Quicksilver, Granite, Diamond, and this time, Amethyst. Okay, Amethyst for the extra Chaos Resistance. When you reach higher tier mats, uh, some of the Arch Nemesis mod might be a bit too strong and they might be able to one-hit you. So Amethyst flask kind of pulls up put us on the benchmark where you don't get one shot so easily by maybe the Chaos Weaver, Arch Nemesis mods and whatsoever, all right? And the last one is just Bottle Fate Sulfur Flask. There is no Life Flask over here. Um, it is definitely not needed because at this stage, we are already quite tanky and we are dealing so much damage that we are killing almost everything that we touch. So when you kill stuff, when you take projectile damage, you basically are going to heal back to maximum immediately straight away okay you can see we have a life leech of 849 but on top of that right because we are going to use unnatural instinct right here we are going to have this uh life gain on Q as well so 30 if you're going to kill 10 mobs is 300 already straight away okay so take note of that and then um the rest is just jewels all right i'm just going to put it over here uh, as in show it over here so Cluster Jewel, the first one will be Physical Damage. Why Physical Damage Cluster Jewel is because it gives us a lot more um, incentives than using two Cold Cluster Jewel, All right? If you can see, we have Better Hardened, which increases our Evasion Rating and Armor, which is what we want. We want more Armor. Force Multiplier gives us Double Damage, and Iron Breaker basically um, gives us 35% increased Physical Damage, all right? If you were to use the Cold Cluster Jewel, you can see that it only gives us like 25 to 30%. There is no 35%, okay? And that is why one side we are going to use the Physical Cluster. For the Medium Cluster Jewel, we're just going to go with the Area Damage. 
and both of them are the same just with towering threat and vast power one that gives you life and aoe and the other one that gives you aoe damage plus aoe all right depending on how many power charge you have for the jewels just have one anti-corrupted blood jewel and the other one just go for one life and double crit multiplier okay so for the other side now we are going to use the cold cluster jewel all right why is because uh very simple first of all we need Dorani's lesson we need the life leech based off from our elemental damage we need some sort of leech okay so that's why Dorani's lesson is here next is prismatic heart i think we all know why why cool cluster jewel is so expensive because this this note right here is just very strong it gives not only elemental damage it fulfills a small part of elemental resistance that we will always lack of okay and last one is just blanket of snow for the penetration which is really good all around for rare monsters unique monsters map boss or even uber bosses if you are going to do them okay and then the cluster is the same as previous all right you're still going to use the determination and the hatred just that if you can find if it's possible to find find one with chaos resistance all right you can see that in this build right the chaos resistance is not capped okay it is not capped it is very hard to find so in your cluster jewel if you can find or cap uh this chaos resistance please uh get them it's a really good additional bonus all right some of you might ask me why you didn't take here i'm going to remind you that i'm actually using unnatural instinct here so if you take it it means you are not going to have it you can see it's going to decrease right okay and then the watcher's eye so the watcher's eye uh 40 percent of physical damage conversion for to cold damage while affected by hatred this is mandatory the second one right i would recommend is um here okay so let me just change um if you can um if you can the best is probably this wait where is it here purity elements and you have chaos resistance this way you are going to max out your chaos resist for sure okay but this is going to be very expensive so the alternative right the alternative is to just get the determination one which a lot of people will not use all right uh, you can get additional armor then you probably will cap your physical damage reduction okay really very simple right here uh please don't please don't take the one that has uh what is that uh physical damage reduction just take the one that's additional armor okay it's much better and then we have the same militant fate and unnatural instinct uh unnatural instinct i've shown you just now it's over there and the rest is the same this is basically what you have for your high budget okay same map mods are uh, just reroll uh players cannot regenerate life mana energy or energy shield this is mandatory if you want to reroll this too it is uh okay as well uh but i will recommend this tree all right the top is just recommend this tree because they are dangerous very dangerous otherwise if your maps are corrupted the only thing you can't do is no regen okay so that's it for the high budget okay so this is for the very very high budget okay i have played this lastly and i can tell you it is super and very satisfying all right i clear maps like a breeze it was no kick at all it is so good 100% delirious feels like 1% delirious i'm just making a joke but yeah you get what i mean it's really really very easy all right because it is a very high budget build um same we have i have the skill tree for all of them just that it starts at level 80 for this and what i can tell you is the difference for this is basically your items okay your items um for all of this we are actually going to use the same okay the skill gems is still the same all right uh of course exception is you can try to get a 21 vow blade vortex okay i wait i don't think 21 20 is possible why is this here uh okay i'll just leave it all right uh 21 vow blade vortex that will be best and it's going to be very expensive okay the changes so what is the difference over here um first of all is our body armor 
our body armor is going to be elevated this time. So I would recommend the elevated uh, explody chest because that will give you more explosion, right? You can even kill things off screen and you won't even know that it actually spawned there. Okay, um, next is basically our boots. You can see this boots is a really lovely boots. Um, chance to gain onslaught on Q. Um, you don't really need the movement speed. Okay, so uh, ignore that. Why is this here is... Okay, let me just click on to the boots. So, question. How do you actually get these boots? All right. Um, first of all, this tailwind, uh, you have 20% increased effect of tailwind on you and your tailwind... You have tailwind if you deal a critical strike. This is the hunter mod. Um, the next mod is actually the Redimir one that gives you onslaught. Why is this here? Is because it gives you seven percent increased attack cast and movement speed while you're onslaught. Okay, so basically what you want here is the additional cast and movement speed so you can cast your blade vortex a bit faster, even though it really doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, and then we will have elusive. Okay. I have shown this in the previous video how I actually done this. I'm not going to show it again. I've shown it quite a few times. So uh, be sure to check out the other one. But how I'm just going to give a quick explanation of how I do this. So first of all, your Awakeners opt to have both the Onslaught and the Tailwind, right? And then you will need to have an open prefix slot. With the open prefix slot, you're going to benchcraft suffix cannot be changed. Okay. Once you have suffix cannot be changed, you are going to harvest craft crit on it. Okay, what you're gonna do is you don't need to um slam crit, but you just need to uh reforge and yeah, just reforge crit because you're already gonna bench craft suffix cannot be changed, so the two mods will not be affected, and you will only have critical strike. And the only crit on the boots that you can get is basically elusive, right? That is the only mod you get. That is the only mod you get. That's why you will have this elusive on critical strike. And then you just bench craft movement speed, okay? I have no idea why is it chill. Um, it is supposed to be this. Yep, it is supposed to be this. All right. Okay, um, so yeah, that's uh, the boots. And then we are going to have Ashes of the Star. Okay, the real or real problem with this, right, is uh, the real problem of this basically is the changes to the Divine Orb. Unfortunately, I don't think we can no longer easily get 20% uh, reservation efficiency of skills, but... Um, this is kind of mandatory for it, alright, sadly to say. So, whatever alternate qualities you have to all the skill gem, the numbers, uh, whether it's 20 to 30, it should not matter, okay? What you need is basically this, so that you have enough mana to use every single skill, okay? And then, um, same, you have your rings, your attribute rings, and then your uh, curse frostbite rings. And then you have your Headhunter, okay? Um, all of the others is the same. So there is a little bit of difference here based on my past experience because in the previous league, I wanted to try a Mage Blood, right? So I understand that some people also prefer the Mage Blood. Uh, so there is actually a Mage Blood uh, variant for this, just that the only difference is the Flask. Okay, I make it, I design it so that you only need to change the belt and the flask if you really want to play with Mage Blood. But what I can tell you is, for mapping, use Headhunter. All right, that is the best and the way to go. Do not use Mage Blood. If you want to use Mage Blood, um, I will say this is more for bossing. Okay, this is more for bossing, and you can see that you don't really need you don't really need a lot of resistance when you have Mage Blood. Um, this just does this one flash right is going to fulfill a lot of things and because of that you can change to the lottery okay let me just um is it this i think it's this all right 
So yes, you can see we still kept our resistance without purity or elements, okay? And just throw in a Zelotry inside. It doesn't have to be anomalous. You can have a 2120 as well. I think it looks the damage is around there. So we have about 24M. Okay, this is mapping, all right? Don't get me wrong. This is mapping. If I were to change to... Okay, Uber Pinnacle Boss. We're going to have 4M only, right? We're going to have 4 million only. All right, why is this so? It's because you can see there. Um, seventy percent less to enemy damage taken. So regardless of how much resistance you pierce, you are still going to have that much reduction damage to them. All right, but I will say four M is already actually uh quite a fair bit of number, right? Uh, for the pinnacle bosses, you're gonna have thirteen M more than enough. Definitely way more than enough. Okay. You're gonna like melt Cyrus instantly with this. Normal Cyrus, not Uber Cyrus. Um, but I can tell you that with Mage Blood last day, I've actually tried the pinnacle bosses, Uber Pinnacle bosses, and they are very viable. Okay, I have killed all of them with the Mage Blood, but otherwise, um personal preference wise, I would still prefer the Headhunter. This build is a mapping build, right? It's gonna go well with the late of Calandra mechanics and stuff like that. Just clear the whole map. And you have a lot of rewards. Alright, so yep, that's it for this build. Uh, yes, it's this, uh, the map mod is the same, alright? You just cannot do regen maps. Alright, just no regen map. That's all. <laughs> that's all. And yep, this is the very last of the Occultist Blade Vortex that I want to showcase. For those of you that will browse through my uh, PoE builds, do take note that um, I have not created the links for it. I will create it definitely before link start. Alright. So for example, when I click onto this link, you actually have the whole buy list plus the market trade link. Alright. You don't have to find it one by one yourself. Um, the trade links are here for convenience sake, which is what everybody likes. Uh, simple and easy to access but just one thing to take note because it doesn't work every single link sometimes uh, when okay when I actually do these trade links right the problem is they are in standard links okay they are in standard links and what happens is when these are in standard link um, it doesn't changes to the new link by itself you have to change it okay so what if I were to press example unnatural instinct now it will bring you right to here all of the exact filters that I changed, but if this is standard, you have to change this yourself, okay? Change it to late of Calandra, maybe it's too long, maybe they change to LOK or something like that, I, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not sure, just be careful of this, do not buy something in the standard link, if not, it's going to be very hilarious. Alright, yes, like I mentioned, I will update uh, this page, and... Yes, do wait for me for now. Uh, I've already released the build guide for it. You can just take a look at all the POB. And also the Winter Dive brand will be up very soon. Alright, happy 3.19. Cheers guys, Have enjoy your leak. Okay, that comes to the end of this video. So um, if you have any questions, do join the Discord and I will try to answer your questions. And if you like my video, do remember to hit the like and subscribe button. I will see you in the next one. Bye.